Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson with whoismatt.com, and today I'm gonna to be reviewing the Dell XPS 17 9700. And I'm gonna be telling you if this laptop is a good choice if you edit video. And before we get started for the sake of ethics, I want you to know that this video isn't paid or sponsored by Dell in any way. This is my XPS 17 laptop. Now, if you've watched my previous videos, you know that I made a video review of the XPS 15 9570 laptop that I bought in summer 2018. And I'm usually someone that wants to stick with a computer for a pretty good amount of time. So why would I want to upgrade to the XPS 17 only two and a half years later? Well, if you've edited videos for a while, I'm betting this issue has happened to you, or you may be experiencing this issue right now. See, I bought a new camera in 2020, the Sony a7S III, which is an absolutely fantastic camera that has a gorgeous image that I love. That said though, that gorgeous footage does come at a price in the form of very high quality, very high bitrate, 10-bit video files. These video files require a lot of power to edit them. And as you're going to see in this review, my XPS 15, even with the best possible processor that I could buy in 2018, an Intel six core i9 still wasn't enough. And so when I saw the XPS 17 and that I could get a laptop that was more capable, especially when it comes to editing higher quality video footage, I was definitely interested. So let's talk about the XPS 17, starting with its build quality and features. Let me start off by saying that I have, for the most part, been very happy with the build quality of my previous XPS 15 over the past couple years, but, this XPS 17 is on a whole other level. I do not say this lightly. Whenever I say that this is one of the best built Windows PCs that I have ever used. And I would say that it easily rivals or surpasses Apple's MacBooks in many aspects. The XPS 17 retains a lot of the design language of Dell's earlier XPS models with an aluminum chassis and a carbon fiber hand rest, but everything just feels more refined. The lines are cleaner. Everything is tighter. There's no gaps, no chassis flex, no wasted space. Open the XPS 17 with one hand and the screen instantly comes to life. The keyboard lights up and within a second, Windows Hello Face Identification logs you in with the new webcam that finally has better placement at the top of the screen. Yes, this laptop has face identification, which feels magical and I'm honestly kind of shocked that Apple hasn't brought Face ID to their MacBooks yet. Looking down at the keyboard now, this keyboard feels very similar to the XPS 15s, which is already a stellar keyboard and one of the best that I've ever used on a laptop. Because the XPS 17 is now larger overall though, I find that the keyboard is even more comfortable to use for extended editing sessions due to the extra room I have to rest my wrists. Come on now though, just like whenever you look at my face but you constantly find your eyes drawn downward to the beard, whenever you look at this keyboard, you're going to constantly find your eyes drawn down to the trackpad, which is impossible to miss. This thing is massive, and I'm so glad to see that Dell has finally taken a page from Apple with an oversized trackpad. This trackpad is a joy to use, and I haven't had any palm rejection issues or unintended inputs. I do want you to keep in mind though that unlike Apple, this trackpad does not have any sort of force touch capabilities. It is a traditional trackpad with left and right buttons that depress in the bottom left and right corner. Back up to the keyboard now, and to the left and right of it, you'll see that the added width of the XPS 17 means that Dell was able to put in a much better set of speakers. What's funny is that whenever I first turned on this laptop and tested the speakers, I thought they sounded horrible. It turns out though that Dell has this janky pre-installed Max Audio Pro software, which was adding a really weird EQ to the audio mix. Once I disabled that, the speakers sounded easily twice as good. And in my opinion, these are some of the best speakers that I've ever used on a Windows laptop. They are also a huge upgrade over the XPS 15 speakers, which were downward firing, mean that they always picked up some form of echo, depending on what surface you had your laptop placed on. With the XPS 17's upward firing speakers, I actually enjoy listening to them. But that said, if you're editing video, I would highly recommend using headphones. Speaking of general sound, while we're at it, I found the XPS 17's fan noise to be much more pleasant than my XPS 15's. 
Whereas the 15s fan sounded more high pitched, which you could definitely hear when editing and rendering a video, the XPS 17s are much lower in tone. And while they are still noticeable and I would still recommend wearing headphones, the fan noise is much improved. Looking at the sides of this laptop, this is where things start to get more interesting. Unlike my XPS 17 with its large quantity of ports, including USB-A, USB-C, and HDMI, the XPS 17 has taken a page from Apple's book and gone with four multifunctional USB ports that work for power, USB, Thunderbolt, and external displays. Welcome to dongle life. But as a nice touch, Dell does include a USB-C to combo USB-A and HDMI adapter in the box, which is quite compact and works very well. And more importantly, I'm very thankful to report that Dell did not do away with the SD card reader. When Apple moved their MacBooks to all USB-C, one of the biggest complaints filmmakers and photographers had was the removal of the SD card reader. I am so thankful that Dell opted to keep an SD card reader on this laptop, as it makes copying footage for editing so much easier. I also really appreciate the laptop being powered by USB-C now as well, because it makes it much easier to find a compatible power adapter in the event that you say, find yourself traveling to a foreign country and forget your power adapter, which may have happened to me recently. Let's talk about something that really matters to filmmakers now though, the screen. Wow, I say this is somebody that has used and loved my XPS 15 screen for years now. The XPS 17 screen is a big jump up in quality and easily one of the nicest screens I've ever used on a laptop or anything else for that matter. It's edge to edge and there's something so impressive about opening up the laptop and seeing the screen stretch all the way from the top to the keyboard. It's very immersive. This isn't just a jump from a 15 inch to a 17 inch screen either. Dell also chose to go from a 16 by nine to a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen, which means the XPS 17 has significantly more vertical real estate. And this real estate is really important if you're a video editor, because once you start editing a complex video and you have a lot of tracks on your timeline, you are going to want extra vertical room on your screen to see those tracks. Now that I've used a 16 by 10 screen, I have zero interest in ever going back to a 16 by nine laptop screen. Of course, just like the XPS 15, this screen is also highly color accurate and very well suited for color correction and color grading when editing video. One interesting improvement that Dell has made is the inclusion of their Premiere Color software, which actually lets you adjust which picture profile you want your computer to use. This is really cool because you can set your computer to a more neutral color profile when you want to edit and color grade a video, but if you are just watching YouTube videos or gaming and you want to boost the saturation and contrast, you can do that using this app. Now, I want you to keep in mind that while this laptop is beautiful, it is also one of the heavier laptops that I've used. Physically, it's still compact, especially whenever you compare it to my much older 17 inch gaming laptop, which is approximately the size of an aircraft carrier. But the XPS 17 is definitely dense and feels noticeably heavier than my XPS 15. One contributor to that weight is the battery, which is 97 watt hours just shy of the max 100 watt hours that you can put in a laptop and still be able to legally fly with it. And let's talk about that battery life. Dell has rated the XPS 17's battery life at seven and a half hours. But if you're editing video using battery power, which is much more taxing, I find that I get around four to five hours. This is still enough to get through a quicker edit, but you're definitely gonna wanna bring along a charger when using this laptop for most video editing. All right, it's time to talk about what you really want to talk about now. Video editing speed with this laptop. Now I'm using the maxed out version of the XPS 17, meaning that it has the Intel i9 10885H processor, NVIDIA RTX 2060, two terabyte SSD, and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So if you have a different configuration, your editing speed may be slower. I have two aspects of video editing that I wanna talk about whenever it comes to this laptop. Of course, we're gonna cover render times and speed because that's a very simple metric to understand. But arguably more important than render times, we need to talk about how this laptop handles normal everyday video editing. 
How fast and responsive is it when it comes to scrubbing through and playing back video on the timeline? We'll talk about that timeline performance first. As I said at the start of this review, I upgraded to the XPS 17 because I wanted a more powerful laptop with more CPU cores for video editing. My older XPS 15 is still quite powerful and could easily handle editing the 8-bit 4K video files that I would shoot with my Sony a7S II. But whenever I upgraded to the a7S III and its beautiful 4K 10-bit video files that play back at up to 120 frames per second, I started to run into major slowdown on my timeline in Premiere Pro. We're talking stuttering playback, multiple seconds of waiting with scrubbing around on the timeline, and oftentimes, after I started playing a video, Premiere would freeze and then continue playing the video after I told it to pause oftentimes for 10 seconds before it would finally catch up and stop. Thankfully, you can think of Premiere kind of like a muscle car, where you throw more horsepower at things and it's going to be faster. Except in this case, it's CPU cores, not horsepower that make it faster. When I upgraded to the XPS 17, I went from six cores and 12 threads to eight cores and 16 threads of performance. And this is definitely noticeable on the timeline. Playback is much quicker, scrubbing is much smoother, and I feel comfortable recommending this laptop with this processor to you if you're editing 10-bit video footage. I do want you to be aware though that when you're editing video, you are definitely going to be able to tell this computer is doing some heavy lifting. The fan noise is going to crank up and it's going to get very warm near the function row of keys as the CPU does its work. That said though, I personally have not experienced any visible signs of throttling and even after editing for hours, the computer doesn't show any sign of slowing down from thermal limitations. Looking at overall render speed now, when I tested exporting a five minute wedding film that I created complete with effects, color grading, and my LUTs, linked down in the video description, I found that the XPS 17 was able to export in two minutes and 53 seconds. Compare this to the XPS 15, which exported the same exact wedding film in seven minutes and 24 seconds, meaning the XPS 17 is over twice as fast. That is a stunning performance improvement, especially considering the XPS 17 is only two years newer than the 15. So as you can see from these tests, the XPS 17 is a a very nice speed upgrade overall, both from a general timeline speed perspective, as well as a render speed perspective, and I have no qualms at all recommending the i9 model of this laptop. Keep in mind though, as I said earlier, I have the maxed out version of this laptop, which is definitely not cheap. So let's talk about the price now and where you can potentially save some money. Fully equipped, a maxed out XPS 17 costs $38.44 at the time of making this video. This is literally what you would get if you go through and select all the upgrades when purchasing. If you're someone with a larger budget that doesn't want to stress about what specific things you should buy and just wants a powerful video editing laptop, you can pick all these upgrades and hit buy. But let's say you want to be smart and save some money. Here are three things I would recommend doing to potentially save yourself hundreds on this laptop. First, I don't think you absolutely need to purchase the top of the line Intel i9 10885H processor for this laptop to edit 4K video. From a power perspective, Intel's cheaper i7 10875H is going to offer almost the same level of performance, but it can retail for potentially hundreds of dollars less. So this is a great way to save some money. Now let's talk RAM, because that is the next way to save money when buying this laptop. Dell currently lets you configure system memory for this laptop from 16 to 64 gigabytes in size. But if you want the best bang for your buck, you can save money by buying and installing your own RAM. My recommendation to you would be to select the minimum amount of RAM when configuring your laptop. In the XPS 17's case, that would be 16 gigabytes, and then upgrade it yourself to 32 gigabytes or 64 gigabytes. In my opinion, the sweet spot for editing 4K video is 32 gigabytes, but if you're editing 6K or 8K, I would go up to 64. The last recommendation I have for you to save money is to wait for sales. Dell is typically very aggressive about putting their computers on sale, so if you can wait a bit to buy, I would be patient and check their site often. Time to wrap this review up. In conclusion, the XPS 17 is a fantastic laptop. Easily the best Windows laptop that I have ever used, with a lot of power crammed into a relatively small for its 17 inch screen sized body. In short, if you are looking for one of the best video editing laptops on the market today, 
This is it. In fact, I really only have one hang up when it comes to telling you to buy this laptop. And this hang up is gonna be something that you're gonna hear me repeat pretty often in the future. See, at the time of making this video, while this laptop is very powerful, Apple is in the process of shaking up really the entire computing industry with their very impressively performing Apple Silicon laptops. So, while at the time of making this video, Apple has yet to release anything more than their MacBook Air and MacBook Pro 13 inch, if you do need a laptop right now, you may want to hold off until later in 2021, whenever you can see what Apple has up their sleeve. Their new computers have the potential to be revolutionary for video editors. So, I want you to keep that in mind, and I would consider waiting if you can. With that, thank you so much for watching this review of the Dell XPS 17. I have many more videos about computers for video editors, including build guides if you wanna build your own video editing desktop computer that is significantly more affordable than this XPS 17. I will link to those videos below if you wanna check them out, and also be a huge help to me if you would consider liking this video and subscribing if you wanna see more videos like it in the future. I will also link to my Instagram below where I will be posting more photos and videos about this laptop as well as others in the future. Lastly, as I'm sure you saw from my render test, I happen to film weddings. And if you happen to film weddings like me, you probably want to book more couples and film more weddings. To help you out with that, I've created a free guide that's gonna walk you through some practical steps that you can take right now in your business to book more couples and film more weddings. It's a completely free gift to you. You can download it at the link down in the video description. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.